we are amidst the great re-everything, reshuffling, resignation, all of these things. Certainly there were dynamics at play long before 2020 that contributed to this. But 2020 was an accelerant. Uh, it was this chemical reagent that essentially allowed uh, many people to feel either motivated enough or comfortable enough at making a change where they would not have otherwise. And it leaves leaders scratching their heads thinking, could I have prevented some of this? Can I prevent more of it? How do I make the most of this moment? How do I attract the people that are leaving other places? You know, it's both a risk and an opportunity. And one of the great failings of call it management training or leadership approaches is the inability to focus on asking the right questions over the prescription to have the right answers. The world is changing so quickly. The options for employees are changing so rapidly that if we port over the answers from even last year, it is likely to leave us in a less than optimal position from a leadership perspective. So first and foremost, there's not enough question muscle, asking muscle, uh, in management and leadership training. And I learned that the hard way, and it's why I love sharing practices and frameworks and perspectives around how to ask better questions as a leader to help get at the modern insights that can help you make better decisions to develop better leaders, retain your workforce, uh, attract those that might be potential applicants for your company. The other challenge is that most management and leadership training was you know, built in the 70s and 80s when people were butts in seats from eight to five at a minimum in the same HQ. No more. <laughs> and so this idea of the way we work fundamentally changing is not a failure of leaders because rightfully so, they were trained from what existed in the past, but there is a new requirement of a modern leader to think about how to create experience and community and membership even when people are not in physical proximity that exists in very few places in management training and leadership in part because it is a bit new and not many are excellent at it. Even the best are not excellent at it. So to everyone's credit, we are all learning together and there are best practices that companies can and should implement to elevate their own leaders leadership to develop better leaders for this era and to benefit from the fact that more people are looking for a more meaningful place to land from a career standpoint.